Welcome again to You Are Supreme Toys. Today we're going to be looking at Thundercats Ultimate's Vulture Man from Super 7. This is the shipper box. As usual, all the Ultimates come in this giant shipper box. The only good thing I can find for these boxes after I've opened them is to use them to reship something I've sold. They're a perfect size for a book, some other action figures, a stack of DVDs, other than that, they take up space. There's nothing special about the packaging. I don't see no purpose in it, though I do know a lot of collectors want to have the shipper box. They want their figures shipped in the shipper box. It protects the integrity of the actual action figure packaging, and that's what they want. I open my stuff. I don't care. That being said, let's go ahead and open this shipper box up and see what's inside. we go here's the actual packaging it is in a cellophane wrapper as is the case with all ultimates so let's go ahead and peel this off I find the uh, cellophane wrapper to be unnecessary as well but people don't want their packaging getting scuffed up and I understand that considering the amount of money we pay for these ultimates you if you have if you are a mint in box collector, you definitely do not want any rubbing from being next to cardboard all the time during ship, shipment or storage. And here we have the Twin Snakes logo, which is pretty much the faction logo for Mumra and the Mutants. Nothing on the front, really, except Thundercats and the logo. Slip cover? And here is Vulture Man. Nice little close up. He's very well arranged in the package. You can see all his trinkets, his extra head, his guns, his visor, or goggles, I mean. Nice little goggles. A lot of these uh, little pieces of equipment have some throwback to an episode in particular regarding Vulture Man. On the back we have this nice piece of art depicting him with his vintage toy weapon, interestingly enough, and his little bio. Vulture Man, the cunning and ambitious Vulture Man is the resident inventor of Castle Plundar and easily the most intelligent of the wicked mutants of Third Earth. Although he's a longtime associate of mutant leader Slythe and an enemy of Lionel's father Claudus, his treacherous nature has led him to work with others like General Rotaro, the Lunatacs, and even the Thundercats themselves, when it best suits his always self-serving agenda. I'd say that's interesting, but it kind of is. It, <laughs> it makes him a more well-rounded character. I remember watching the show as a kid and I did always enjoy it when uh, Vulture Man would show up. I always liked the way his voice actor portrayed him. So, with that being said, let's uh let's go ahead and uh cut him open and see see what we got here. a double clamshell. They put extra hands and accessories on the second clamshell. I didn't see a lot of these double clamshells in play until uh, I started collecting a lot of the uh, Japanese action figures like Figuarts or Figma because they come with so many extra parts. But now that we've got our own like lines that are harking back. Here's an extra hand. This is a big hand. 
you can hold uh, some of the bigger items like that bottle we're gonna see soon. Get all these extra hands out of here. It doesn't look like he comes with quite as many hands as uh, Bengali did. So with these four hands, that gives him six total hands. Let's see what do we got here. Sorry, got a gripping hand, another gripping hand, and more gripping hands. That is a big grip. Big grips right there. Interesting, he doesn't come with any fists. I guess vultures don't typically make fists. I don't know. This is his vintage inspired weapon. I like this okay. It feels a little fragile. I'm not too keen on that. Just from first impressions, I feel like you're going to break this if you mess with it too much. It's def definitely on the more flimsy feeling side. It almost looks like an exhaust with claws on the end. It, the one thing it does make me think of is it makes me wish that Bengali came with his vintage his vintage hammer. The little hammer is fine, but I would have liked to have that bigger vintage toy hammer that the original toy had. That being said, uh, with the uh, recent reveal of the retro toy wave of the Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats, I'd like to see that, you know, maybe they'll get to a Bengali one day and he'll have that hammer. All right. Got this nice gun here. Now, a lot of these accessories, you know, he used in the show or, you know, they had a particular intention. Well, I'm not sure why that feels wobbly like that. Mm, I hope it's just that way. But this is a really cool looking gun. This barrel seems kind of iffy though. I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of wobbles. I'm not keen on that. The last thing I need or want is to have quality control issues with such expensive toys. A little pistol. It seems to be in my experience that it really doesn't matter how much you pay for a collectible, there's going to be instances where the quality suffers in, in regards to certain things like perhaps the accessories or the actual figure itself sometimes. These goggles are really nice. They're a uh, really soft pliable plastic and they're painted inside and out it looks like yeah they're painted cuz these this is not the molded color so these are painted brown now i can't say this for sure but i worry about things like this that are that wrap around the head of a figure because i remember from the uh gi joe pursuit of cobra line there was a arctic destro figure who on the top of his head had this ice frosting from you know him being in the frost and a metal head. So they did this little iced paint app on his dome of his head that looked like he was standing in the snow. But he also came with a pair of uh, snow goggles. And I remember displaying my Destro with the snow, go snow goggles up risen up on his forehead. And it sat there so long, and when I went to take him off the display and put him in storage when I was moving, I pulled the goggles off, and it peeled about all of the uh, the frosting off the top of his head because it had stuck. The type of paint they used had stuck to the uh, type of paint and rubber material that his goggles were made of. I was very disappointed in that. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to display them with the goggles, I don't know, just check it every once in a while. Because I'd hate for that to happen with him because he does have paint on his head. And sometimes these paints interact with each other and they stick. <clears throat> Here's his alternate head. This, this head is great. 
My only issue right out the gate are these mold lines on the beak. I don't care for that. But ignoring that, it looks really nice. You can see his little beady, beady pupils right there. Let's see inside of his jaw. This would have been killer if it was hinged, but I'm okay with it not being. That's a nice head sculpt. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the one I decide to use. He comes with a couple hand tools here. I don't know if these are really necessary. A little flathead screwdriver. And a pair of these pliers or nippers or cutters. I'm not exactly sure. But they're very tiny. I don't know if he'd be able to hold them in any of the hands he has. Now that I'm looking at it. He has this little bottle of uh, superpower potion. Something that I think we all wish we could have. I remember, I remember this episode vividly, even though I haven't seen it in ages, where he uh, got this potion and gained super strength. I also vaguely recall this one. If I remember correctly from other uh, reviews, this is a this was the mimic gun that helped him uh, copy the voices of other people. It almost looks like a uh, a genie lamp. All right, that just comes down to Vulture Man himself. Twist ties on the back. I believe this is the only thing holding him in the package, other than the likely tight grip the actual blister has on him. Never been a fan of the metal twist ties, but what are you going to do? Time for that creaking noise. Everybody loves the creaking noise. Ah. is in there. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Hey, and uh, something fell out of the package that I had missed. A wrench. I don't even think it was in the spot. I'll have to look back at the camera. I didn't see it in the slot it was supposed to be in. It might have fell into the plastic. Alright, here's Vulture Man. He looks like an inquisitive bird. Just gonna show you how he can move. That's pretty good. Got this ab crunch. I like that ab crunch. I feel like it could have been better, but you know, he's got a waist swivel. This is a softer plastic, but it's still actually really, really firm. It's got the, all these. It's really difficult to get in there. That is a that, I'm sorry, that's a that's a terrible elbow cut. That does nothing, just about. It might as well just be... <sighs> yeah, that's not good. That being said, this is still a great figure. It looks wonderful. This is also a pliable plastic skirt with some slits down the side. I think it's a little too thick. I feel like if it would have been half this thickness, it would have probably been a lot better for articulation but it seems to be doing the job he's got a thigh cut thigh cut in there weird knee articulation these claws on the back of the feet yep. looks pretty good no loose joints pretty it's not too tight, but it's not too loose, so yeah. I like that. Oh, he stands right away. That's impressive. Usually you have to finagle with him a little bit, but. Well, oh, never mind. Those ankles are a little weak under his weight. In the show, I always he always walked over a little hunched. I, I noticed a lot of people complaining about his scale, but he didn't stand straight up in the show as far as I can recall and you know he was always in some kind of like hunched over form 
he was a very cunning character, and they depicted that very well in the cartoon because there were so many instances where he would seemingly, if my memory serves me correctly, I could be wrong, but it, he seemingly would diminish his own size to be less intimidating to others to gain some kind of advantage. And I just remember him being a very cunning, smart character in the show. Well, it's smart for a kid's cartoon. But just so you... Let me see. I got Tiger here in his squat pose. He's roughly the same height. So a lot of... I don't understand the complaints. If you pose him the way that he intends to stand, you know, it's next to Mumra, he's, he's, he's small. But I guess if you were to stand him straight up as tall as he could, I mean, he's still not that big, really. So I don't know what everybody's talking about. But he does get to be a head taller. Well, not quite a head, but like a finger taller than a tiger standing straight up. But that's not the way I remember him and his stature in the show. Or, except for a few instances when, like, for instance, he was taking the superpower potion. He was bigger than everybody. But uh, I think he's great. I had Vulture Man as a kid. Um, most of my Thundercats, well, now to think about all of the Thundercats I had, were secondhand from flea markets or yard sales or hand-me-downs. So most of the Thundercats I had did not have their weapons. So I'd had my Vulture Man, but I did not have this this claw accessory. Um, that being said, I remember the vintage Vulture Man being a bigger, heftier figure when compared to, say, the Thundercats. He was not quite as big as Mumra, of course, but he was definitely a stockier built figure. I kind of look forward to seeing if they do a vintage toy style version of him because I definitely would be buy would be buying that. I, I think I'm very excited for that wave of figures, but not so much in that I'm tired of pre-ordering <laughs> stuff from Super 7 right now and they just... You know, they don't, they're not stopping. But the sculpt looks good. The articulation is okay. The paint apps could be better. But that's been par of the course for most of the Thundercats figures so far. It's not so bad if you consider they're just trying to go for the closest thing to the animated aesthetic as they can. At least now. Initially, they, they, they were using Mattel's old molds. But they slowly have been kind of drifting into a specific style that they did not start with. So I can see them going back and revisiting some of the earlier figures. And hopefully some of them they do revisit because that Pumira is terrible. That's uh, Super 7's Vulture Man from the Thundercats Ultimates line. I don't know what else to say about him. Pretty standard. Pretty standard. I'm probably going to be displaying him with this head. I like this head, but I also like the uh, also like the standard head. I don't know what gun I would give him. I, I like this one, but I also like the little pistol. I'm probably not going to use him with the claw vent retro style claw weapon. I just it's just real flimsy, and I don't like it. It's funny how I complained uh, in my previous review of Bengali of how his hands are just too tight to even get the little hammer in them. And then we come over here to Vulture Man, and his hands are varying degrees of openness. Like this one, you, this one you're not going to get. Without some heating up, serious heating up, it's not going to just slip into the hands. I know a lot of people do their videos, and they'll do a bunch of cool shots after their articulation and stuff where they have the weapons in their hands. And they had to do a lot of manipulation to get that, get those poses. They make the figure look nice in their videos, but it's it's really not, it's really not doing it justice. Like straight out of the package, most people are going to be trying to do this. And if you're buying this for your kid, I hope you're not buying this for your kid. Your kids don't need fifty-five dollar action figures. But that's just my opinion. It's just they don't want to just slip right into the hands. But these look like his trigger fingers. Trigger hands right on the uh, the figure. Ooh. 
Tell something broke for a second. And they slip in rather easily into into these. Yeah, so they work with that. That's pretty good. His trigger trigger hands that he's actually using in the package are probably for the most necessary, most useful. Yeah, I don't see I don't see any reason right now. If you want to pose him with his guns, just leave the hands he's got on. I do like this gun too, though. As far as the little accessories, these, this is the smallest grip he has, and he can actually hold the screwdriver. I'm surprised it's it's just snug enough. And the same thing with the pliers, just slips right in. The wrench, not so much. Maybe you can get it between his fingers, or wrap it, or wrap it around a thumb. Oh, it's funny. It's funny. This this wrench feels sturdier <laughs> than it should. The superpower potion is obviously what the giant gripping hands is for. It slips right in. Yep. So he's a little bit more properly readied with his hands to fit the according the corresponding accessories out of the package which is great because a lot of these aren't a lot of the ultimates in general are not I, I can't recall just how many ultimates I've had to do some hot water methods on just to fit a sword or a pistol in their hand but yeah I think this is about covers it let me check these goggles real quick those fit over very nicely. Yep, nice and snug. Looks good. Looks good. I like that. Flips right off. I wonder if uh, these goggles would be useful for any other characters. I know he's got a wider head. His eyes are wider apart, so I'm not so sure about that. But That looks really good. That's going to look good on the... Uh, Let's see how easy it is to pop the head off. Sometimes these heads are tight. No, nope, that wasn't too bad. It was not too bad. Sometimes it's, it is to get it on, though. Gosh. Ah, oh, that's... God. Ooh, that is not on there. This reminds me of something, and I cannot... I cannot put my finger on it. Some something from the uh, 80s or early 90s. I don't know. The head, those second heads are usually really tight. The first time you put them on, this one pops off easily and pops on pretty easy. He's a bird. He can turn his head 360, right? It works for me. I like this figure. I really like him. He's definitely better in some respects than Bengali. But I love Bengali's colors. I just wish my Bengali's Thundercat logo was not smudged. And that his hammer would fit better. But he stands reasonably well. His ankles are a little weak. But his feet are long, so they kind of help him. If he gets unbalanced, they kind of help him stand a little bit better. That's usually the case with bigger figures. But yeah. Again, Super 7's Thundercats Ultimates, Vulture Man. Nice figure. I like it a lot. $55? I don't know. I'm not, it's been so long, I'm not even sure if this was a $45 figure when I ordered it or it was already $55. Hmm. I feel like $40. This, at, at most, I feel like these figures are a $40 price point. I don't believe they're worth 55. I just I just can't feel it, but I'm paying it. So, they're going to keep charging it. As long as we keep paying it, they'll charge it. Yeah, see how weak those ankles are? That's not good. All right. This has been You Are Supreme Toys. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.